So the uh, next approach that we will discuss is also very popular and very important in management control literature, and it, it is the institutional approach. And this approach is a little bit different to the two that we before argued, because the two before assumed that the organization was very conscious and making the decisions about which control, which management control mechanisms to use, when to use it, how to use it in closing that gap between the strategy and the structure. But in here, the institutional approach uh, claims that the organization and the managers are not really that conscious or are not really that powerful on making those decisions because the institutional approach says that organizations behave like they behave because of three things, regulations, routines, and isomorphism. So it is true, regulations play a big role. Like if you cannot do something, you have to adapt and not do it. But then institutional approach says that it is also routines. Like we do things uh, just to kind of doing the same thing we did yesterday and the day before. So organizations are the same. They, we, they don't really think everything they do. A lot of things they do are just routines. And the other thing is isomorphism, which means copying what others are doing. So when there is uncertainty, it is this approach says that it is not true that we think very consciously how to solve that uncertainty. It says that it's just copying others. Like so, if there is a new technology and I don't know how to to approach this, how how to act or how to behave or if I adopt it or not, this approach says that it's not really. A lot of thinking is just you will end up doing what competitors are doing. So these three things are kind of the uh, underlying approach of institutional theory. So uh, linked to that, it also says that changes are not that quick. In the contingency approach, is the opposite. In the contingency approach, is that there is something, there is there is a gap or something. So quickly there will be changes. There will be implementation of a new mechanism or whatever. Here is different. Here it says that uh, the, the change will be slow. Even if there is a quick implementation of something, the institutional approach says that it will take time until it actually works well. Like it, maybe you implement a new system, but it will take time. It will not come that quick, like just with one day, with just with training, it will change. No, it will take time. Uh, and there, inside of institutional theory, there are different approaches. Like, for example, the, the, the social approach to institutional theory is that social institutions are more important, but there is also the economic view on institutional theory, which says that in the end, the economic institutions are the more relevant ones. And I included this picture in here because I think it represents a marriage. Uh, and that is because marriage is maybe the oldest institution that exists. An institution is uh, um, something that is the, that we all know <laughs> how to how to behave in that institution based on these three elements: the regulation, routines, and isomorphism. So that is true. When you get married, you you are following regulations. There is also a, a lot of routines, like what. Uh, what you have been doing before you keep doing, and then a lot of copying, like you are copying what maybe your parents did, your friends who are married are doing. So this, the, the marriage is maybe the biggest and oldest institution that in human history. So think about it, what other institutions do, do we have in accounting? And as I said, there are some streams institutional theory that says it's more social aspects like marriage, but then others say that it's more like economics aspects, like, um, like for example, ownership in institutions or uh, air earnings management institutions. There are different institutions in different fields that you can that you can discuss. So um, institutional theory has a lot of uh, relevance in in academia right now, and I think there is a lot of possibilities for you to write your dissertation following an institutional approach like try to identify institutions in a certain accounting aspect and maybe uh, you, you can um, unpack and explain how that happens. And then we're moving to more uh, complex or I can even say crazier <laughs> approaches to uh, management control. 
Uh, institutional approach was very popular in the 90s, in the 2000s also, and is still popular and important. But then uh, in the first decade, second decade of this century, we had a kind of evolution of that institutional approach, with, which is the post-structural approach. And here things are going to get a bit <laughs> crazy in terms of philosophy. Uh, the institutional approach, although it says that you, that organizations are uh, behave because of regulations, routines, and isomorphisms, institutional theory assumes that there is certain stability and there is certain structure that exists, that there is some stability. Like if there is uncertainty about a new technology, there is uncertainty, but the company knows how to work with what we have right now. Like we can operate today, we know the processes, we can do it. But this approach, the post-structural approach, says that structure actually never exists. Um, and I included this picture in here of the, this is a picture from, or not picture, like a drawing from an atom that kind of contradicts maybe what we learn in high school about atoms. Maybe you remember it's like a, like a solar system that then you have the core in the center and then you have electrons flying around and the electron was like a planet, right? Like a small ball flying around. But uh, people in physics learn that the electron is very strange, this kind of the idea of, of relative theory in, in physics, that the electron can be in two places at the same time. So it's never, it's never kind of stable. We cannot really take a picture of the electron in one point because it can be in two places at the same time. So that's why the new kind of view of atoms is like this. Instead of having the electron as a planet, we have like a cloud because there are possibilities or that it exists in different places at the same time. So that, that sounds very weird, <laughs> but in organizational theory, that is the argument from the post-structural approach. It says that in reality, organizations do not know how to behave really. Like there is no structure, there is no, no balance. The, it is only that under certain conditions, we adapt to, to work in a way that, that it works. So maybe today I woke up and I feel good. So then I start reading my paper and then I the next thing I coffee or something. So it is because all, all of this kind of... Uh, mechanisms made me act like that and if in another day I will have a headache maybe I won't start reading the paper I will start doing something different so that is the idea of the post-structural approach like organizations do not really know how to do anything they only react to what is happening outside so it's like this electron that can be here or can be there depending on certain aspects so it's a kind of strange view but it's a very kind of new but uh, but it's right now it's very popular this idea that organizations do not have structure they do not have like uh, anything really material in a way it is only that because things are happening they then then organizations react in a way but it's very important that this assumption that there is no structure at all. So imagine like in the other, in the when we discussed the contingency approach, we assumed there was structure and we had strategy. In this approach, we don't really have structure. It's like, that is just like a way of being here. So if you don't have structure, then what is management accounting going to do? Management accounting is going to create the, uh, or is going to help to create that kind of relative structure, relative balance, because there is no absolute structure, it's always moving. So management control can help you to achieve that relative stability. That is the, the, the kind of implication of management control in the post-structural approach. And in here, we have uh, two theories that are very popular in management control, actor network theory and practice theory. So I don't want to go into details about these theories, it's not that relevant right now, but they assume this idea that the structure doesn't exist, it's just moving around, it's always a bit subjective and relative, but 
with management control, you can achieve certain relative control, certain relative uh, uh, balance at some point in time. There is one philosopher called Bruno Latour from France, and he says that uh, that organizations are not like uh, like um, like islands. That the islands are kind of stable and they are in there. They are more like clouds. Like they appear and disappear. They form different constellations and these kind of different things, uh, depending on what is happening on the weather the pressure, all of these things. So that's kind of the analogy from him. And finally, I want to discuss, but very quickly, because we already have a full lecture on this, the critical theory approach. And this approach, as I said before, it assumes that uh, uh, management control uh, reproduces social structures without much uh, conscious, with, like managers and owners are not conscious of the reproduction of certain social issues. And we discuss like, uh, for example, maybe inequality can be, um, uh, do, um, can be just copied in, in management control mechanisms. We discuss, for example, the, uh, uh, that it's a bit strange that accounting claims that we that it can solve social issues, but at the same time accounting is used by very horrible things like the Holocaust or extortion. So we discussed that in that, or in corruption too, there is management control in corruption. So the critical theory approach, we already had the lecture, so I don't want to go into detail, but it's that idea that management control kind of carries these social structures. And with that, we, we finish with the theoretical perspectives. We can we kind of learn a chronological development of the discipline. Luckily for us, it's very new. It's like a hundred years old. It's not that old, but this is more or less kind of a map. And as I said before, the contingency approach and the strategic management approach are very important and relevant. And at the same time, they are very doable for a dissertation. So because of that, I will finish the lecture by showing you or teaching you two frameworks that come from uh, con the, con the strategic management approach that are very useful when you, you do your research. And with that, we will finish the lecture. So uh, it will be just one more video.